No! There's no way! There's no way he's dead! There's no way he can be dead, right? There's no way! Bakugo is dead. And this is me getting completely and utterly broken by his death. My Hero Academia chapter 362 is one of those chapters where you cannot believe what you just read even if you read it 10 times and came to the same conclusion each of those reads. Because for some reason I just can't believe that Bakugo is actually dead. Like how is that even a thing? Horikoshi just killed off a main character and it's Bakugo of all the characters. So how am I supposed to feel about all the other characters in the story? Guys, I I just don't know how to feel. There is so much that happens in this chapter so let's go ahead and talk about it. Hey! Wise. So the chapter starts off exactly where it ended last chapter, with Tamaki Amajiki using his secret move which allows him to combine and manifest all of the food that he has consumed in that day. He starts off by mentioning that everyone's fate is in his hands, and that if this attack fails, everything is over. Which puts a lot of pressure on Tamaki's back, but he starts to remember all of the good words that his master Fat Gum, his subordinates Kirishima and Tetsu Tetsu, and more than anyone, his best friend Mirio's words, as they have always seen the potential in Tamaki and often praised Tamaki for his amazing works. And while remembering all of the encouraging words that he's gotten in his past, he mentions that all of those positive and kind of words were like treasure to him. However, he was unable to accept them due to the lack of confidence that he had in himself. And all he could ever do was sit under the heavy weight of all of that treasure while trying to find some level of peace inside of his own self-deprecation. But it's finally now when everything is on the line and Tamaki is the one person that can actually actually do something to change the course of this battle that his confidence and belief in himself starts to spark. And as he begins to charge up and attack at Shigaraki, he thanks all his comrades for everything that they have done for him. Because the weight of all of that treasure is currently giving him the strength to carry on. He then attacks Shigaraki with this amazing cornucopia combination plasma cannon. And honestly, I'm still quite confused as to how it's possible for his quirk to allow him to manifest what he eats, but yet it can somehow turn into a cannon. And regardless of of what you may say, Tamaki having such ace up his sleeves shows that he will definitely be a formidable hero in the future of the story. But that's only if he gets to see the future of the story. As Shigaraki is being attacked by this plasma cannon, his body starts to evolve and mutate even further while he's looking at Tamaki with a deadly stare, telling him that he needs some understanding. But before he can say anything else, a permeated Mirio goes completely through the blast and punches Shigaraki in the face. This was a 1 million IQ play and honestly there is no piece of my imagination that would have ever created a scenario in which Mirio would quite literally permeate through the blast that Tamaki is attacking with to catch Shigaraki off guard and do even more damage. But the most interesting thing that you might have missed is that Nejire's energy is also around Mirio's arm. This is ridiculously amazing because what this tells me is that the teamwork for the UA Big 3 is something that should not be underestimated. They work together so well that they were able to devise this plan within a split second and create an attack that was so large in volume that you can see it from kilometers away. However, there is an unfortunate side to this situation because even though Tamaki, Nejire, and Mirio has great chemistry and they work together flawlessly, none of those attacks were actually strong enough to do anything to Shigaraki. And from the smoke that was created from the blast, Shigaraki tells the big three straight up to think about this situation for a second. Do you really think that blast would have been enough to kill All Might in his prime? And oh my goodness did this bring shivers down my spine. Because this has confirmed something that I have been saying over the last couple of months. Which is that a base Shigaraki is officially on a prime All Might level. And the scariest part about this is that he still has not been able to demonstrate how powerful he truly is because he has yet to be able to show the truest extent of what All For One is capable of. So in all reality, a prime all for Shigaraki right now would mop the floor in every single store in all of the world with a prime all might. Shigaraki would go on and tell the big three that they are delusional, but he would immediately turn his attention to something else that would break all of My Hero Academia 
forever. Standing on his last leg with two completely broken arms, a bloody face, and a will to win, Bakugo is up on his feet looking completely helpless and ready to risk his life. And he tells Best Genius to take good care of everyone. Words that would again bring shivers down my entire spine as those words imply that he is willing to risk it all for the sake of this battle. Shigaraki stares down Bakugo, but it seems as though something is bothering him. And as we see Bakugo with a bloodied face, and I mean this is an awesome shot of Bakugo, along with small sparks of explosions coming from his body, he says something that is very peculiar. We still have a battle to win, isn't that right, Azuku? This piece of dialogue is arguably the single most important piece of dialogue in all of My Hero Academia chapter 362. Because this, along with implications that are received later on in the chapter, could show that Bakugo might actually be talking with Deku in the Vestige world right now. But in the blink of an eye, Bakugo completely speed blitzes Shigaraki, attacking him head on with an amazing cluster bomb to the face. Now this is where things get very interesting, because as Bakugo speed blitzes Shigaraki, which by the way means that he is prime all might level speed, he randomly says, right. But it doesn't really make much sense, because it's almost as if he's answering his own question from earlier, which was a question that was proposed to Deku. I'm gonna leave that there and save that for a video that I'm going to drop really soon and why Bakugo's vestige could be inside of one for all. But in continuing, Shigaraki tries to attack Bakugo and he immediately dodges with his newfound speed. Everyone seems shocked that he dodged it and Shigaraki tries to attack him yet again. And we then see an amazing shot of Bakugo with his entire body filled with explosions. We then get a certain reveal about Bakugo's quirk, which is that Bakugo can detonate at will the nitroglycerin-like sweat that comes out of the palm of his hands. But what we find out next about his quirk is what makes everything even more amazing. It says that Cluster Bomb, which is the move that Bakugo created, had a side effect that he didn't even consider, which is that whenever he concentrates his sweat into very small spheres, it places a ridiculously large burden on the sweat glands in the palms of his hands. And in creating a ridiculously large amount of spheres inside of his sweat glands, the compact nature of the spheres are actively dispersing throughout his entire body in order to be released, making it so that the spheres that were created from the sweat glands in his hands are traveling throughout his entire body to be released through all of the pores that he has in his body, making him quite literally a walking explosion bomb. It says that the detonation going off inside of his body brings about an increase in speed, which is crazy because the speed amp that he has gotten is on the levels of a prime all might. But there is a huge drawback. His entire body body is throbbing. And that is an important thing that Bakugo has observed when using this new power. Because he immediately connected this to Deku. Fighting even though your body feels like it's going to fall apart and consistently improving by doing so. This is the path you've been walking all this time, isn't it? Tell me, Izuku, will I reach you someday? Now, contrary to everyone's belief, I don't believe that this is Bakugo saying that even with this power, Deku is still far ahead of him. I interpreted that Bakugo just realizes that this is the type of power that one for all is and now that bakugo has essentially unlocked what would be called his full cow version of explosion he understands that the throbbing that he is currently going through is exactly what deku has been going through his entire time using one for all full cow now with all of this epicness that is currently going on this is where everything turns for the worse as something is going completely wrong with all for shigaraki and while looking at bakugo he has this vague vision of what seems to be the second user of one for all which is even more crazy because it took looking at Bakugo to get this vision of the second user. This obviously brings a question on if Bakugo and the second one for all user are connected, and it's looking like that might be the case. But all for Shigaraki questions himself as to why he's angry and why he's losing control against some run-of-the-mill heroes who doesn't even possess one for all, and decrees and declares that he will kill Bakugo right now. And as he says that, we immediately flash to what seems to be a vestige version of All Might talking to Bakugo. Bakugo, in an awkward manner, mentions that, that ever since he's met All Might, he's always wanted to ask him for something, but he couldn't find the right moment to ask. He then goes out of his pocket and pulls out an All Might collector's card, and reminisces back in a time in which he, Deku, and his other two friends originally acquired those cards. And in his mind, or this vestige world of some sorts, he tells All Might that he's always wanted him to sign it for him. And while all of this is going on, we see a panel of Bakugo's heart 
completely imploding from inside of his body. Originally, I didn't want to believe that this was what was happening, but the next couple of panels would change everything for Bakugo forever. As Sun Eater, Mirko, Nejire, Mirio, and Best Genius tries to attack Shigaraki before he makes his final attack on Bakugo, none of them were able to make it in time. As Shigaraki, with his evolved hands, pierces completely through Bakugo's chest as Bakugo's final blast emerges from his right hand. Shigaraki punches Bakugo so hard that all of the quirk equipment on his body completely breaks off and sends him flying with blood splattering all over the ground. Best Genius immediately runs to Bakugo's aid as Shigaraki menacingly tells Bakugo that all he's doing is reenacting the same thing that he did in the battle of the Paranormal Liberation War. All for Shigaraki goes on to say that they have been preparing for this moment, that the Demon Lord's body is now officially realized, and that the story of how all for Shigaraki became the greatest demon lord on the planet begins now. And as we quickly get a glimpse of Bakugo's parents and all the heroes in the battle looking shocked, Best Genius screams out his heart, and Bakugo is officially revealed to be dead. This chapter broke me. Let me know your thoughts on this chapter in the comment section below, and make sure to subscribe if you are new. I mean, I'm, there's no way. Ta tell me I'm not looking at this, man.